Welcome to the Monday, June 17th episode of Stacks on Deck. I'm your host, Walter, and this is Brave Birds DFS. This is one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. All right, so we have a nine-game slate on Monday. Now, a little bit of a change. The first games start at 6.40 p.m. Eastern, so make sure you don't get caught slipping and you go to your computer at 6.55. If you do that, you're going to end up in a little bit of trouble. All right, so let's pull up my checklist. And for all of my episodes, I look at six things. I look at how things went the previous day. I look at any rainout concerns. And then I'm going to walk you through my top stacks, top pitchers, top hitters, and a DK stack build. All right, so you have the bag in the overdraft. We know what the bag is. You got that old school cartoon money bag with the the golden coins. I don't know if those are Bitcoins outside of the money bag, but then you have the overdraft. That's when your money just flies away. Could even go into the negative. That's really sad when that happens. So I did not have an episode on Sunday, but <clears throat> I did play in the main contest. So this bag and overdraft is for the early slate. And the bag was definitely the Mets. The Mets went out there and scored 11 runs. So if you had a Mets stack, you probably feeling real good. And then from the uh, Reds, De La Cruz had 35 pa- fantasy points. And then you had Blanco from Houston with 33.95 fantasy points. But it was not all good. The Tigers, who were, you know, hitting, had a had a went off on Saturday. I think uh, surprisingly, on a lot of people, not a lot of people had them as a stack to play. But the people that played, I believe, the Tigers stack on Saturday were feeling real good. So a lot of people said, "Let's run that back on Sunday," and they went out there and only scored one run. Now, once again, I did not make these recommendations, but I'm going to be honest with you. I probably would have recommended both of these players if I had had a show on Sunday and it ruined a lot of people's lineup. I didn't play them. Uh, so luckily I had had a pretty good Sunday early slate because I didn't play them for various reasons. Um, but Cease had 1.7, negative 1.75 fantasy points and Wheeler had negative 4.45 fantasy points both of them having one of the worst games of the season and both of them i think being owned by over 40 percent of people so just totally totally (laughs) ruining lineups there all right so rain out concerns i don't have any rain out concerns uh today i don't just trust what DraftKings says i actually go do my own research and i don't have any concerns at all about any of the nine games on the slate today All right, so my top stack. So how do I create this list? I'm looking at how uh, the team has been doing lately. I'm looking at how they distribute their offense. I look at the salary and I look at the matchup that they're playing because it doesn't make any, it doesn't do any good if they have this stud they're going up as, you know, as a pitcher, as far as the pitcher that they're, they're going up against. So I like the Red Sox. I mean, the Red Sox, first of all, they steal a lot of bases and I love those bonus You know, those points you get, I consider them almost bonus now. You know, you're going to get the five points plus the player is going to be in scoring position, giving them a, or deeper in the scoring position, giving them a higher likelihood of uh, being hit in, which gives you more points. And if you're stacking, the person behind them gets those, you know, get those fantasy points. So I love the Red Sox and I'll walk you through a Red Sox stack at the end of this video. Uh, Rockies, yeah, I don't know if I've ever had Rockies number two uh, before, but uh, over the past seven to 10 days, they've been hitting really well. Plus this is a nine game slate, so you're always gonna have some teams that you wouldn't normally have on there. Once again, the Angels back in the top five at number three. And for the first time in a long time, the Braves, I've made my top stack. My team has made made, uh, the top stack. They have been playing from an offensive perspective much better, which is weird because of all of the injuries. And then rounding out the top five, you have the Giants. Okay, so my top pitcher. So I generally don't like to go super chalky, but in this case, uh, Sonny Gray and Max Fried, looks like Fried, have amazing matchups. Um, the um, 
the Braves are playing the Tigers. And once again, they had that outlier game on Saturday, but in general, haven't been playing well. I love to target teams who strike out a lot and the Tigers like to strike out. I love the target teams who are having a hard time with power because we know when you're your pitcher gives up a three-run homer. You could end up like having a Wheeler game, like what happened. And then for uh, St. Louis, Miami, just poultry hitting, batting below 200, striking out, not hitting home runs. So, I mean, I think this is one of the times where DraftKings got the salary right. But if you want to... You want to pivot, you want to save some salary, you want to add a little bit of risk. Uh, I like uh, Peterson for the Mets. He has a, a good matchup against Texas, who hasn't been hitting as well lately. All right, so we go to my top hitters, and you have Duran for uh, the Red Sox 5300. A little bit expensive, but the way he's been playing lately, and we'll talk about him in my Red Sox stack spoiler alert, uh, definitely someone I like. Olsen. You know, I put the Braves as the number four stack. So definitely if you do a Braves stack, you have to put in Olsen. And then you have Reynolds for the uh, the Pirates. If you're doing that one-off player, he has a 14-game hitting streak at this point. All right, matter of fact, let's go over the DraftKings. And so once again, we got to make sure, especially when you have a catcher in your stack, as you know, catchers take days off. But we can start with Wong in my, in my uh, Red Sox stack, batting 333 on the year. Five home runs, 25 RBI. A catcher who has two stolen bases. I mean, the Red Sox are so aggressive. I believe he has an eight-game hitting streak right now. Oh, well, nine-game hitting streak. Excuse me, nine-game hitting streak. Uh, multi multi-hit game last night on Sunday night uh, baseball with three RBI. He will take a walk. I mean, just really like Wong at 3,600. One of the things that I like about the Red Sox stack that I have here, they're not very expensive. Then you have Hamilton, who has 18 stolen bases on the year. He went out and got yeah four stolen bases on Sunday night, you know, baseball uh, against their, their rivals, the Yankees, uh, four home runs, 12 RBI, multi-hit games in two out of the last five games with a home run and only 3,800. And then we talked about Duran, 5,300. Yeah, he's expensive, but he is worth it. Uh, can get the stolen bases, can have the power. I believe he has a 10-game hitting streak right now, a seven-game hitting streak. So yeah, definitely like Duran and Rafaela, uh, seven home runs, 39 RBI, 3,200. I mean, just look at that salary. When you have a salary like that, look at these splits, man. Look at this uh, three hit, back to back three hit games. <laughs> um, you have um, two hit games. I mean, just someone just tearing the cover off the ball. And when you have a stack like this, then you can put in those expensive pitchers. You can put in the gray, the free, if you want to go with the young gun for Pittsburgh. Uh, you can put in those expensive pitchers when you have a stack like this, as opposed to sometimes with a more expensive stack. So let me know your thoughts. Feel free to leave any comments, but otherwise go out there and win that guap.